This is five games that made me a gamer. I'm Scott. I'm Jen. We're Retro Rivals, and this is part two of a VR for Poor Man's Retro Game Room. Yes. Put out a video of the five games that made him a gamer, and it reminded me so much of our uh, Get, Get to, to Know, know gamer. gamer series that we did a few years back that I, it brought me back to like a lot of fond memories, and I was, I, we asked him if we could do a VR. Yeah. And Jen did hers already. This is my version. Yeah. My part. Yeah. Jen's gonna pull out the games. I've already pre-selected them. Yep. I have uh, one honorable mention that's on the top. Yep. And five-ish five games. <laughs> Ish. Five-ish. Yeah. yeah. It's really hard to narrow down to five. It's terribly hard. It's terribly yeah. hard. But here's his honorable mention. Devil May Cry. Devil May Cry on the PS2. I remember the very first time I played this. It was on a demo disc. Yeah. Because I rented a game. I don't remember what game it was. That's how memorable that other game was. But I remember the demo disc, and it was with a buddy, Pat. We we rented that game for the weekend, and we were playing it, and we were like, ah, let's pop in the demo disc. And we popped that demo disc in, and I think it was only maybe like one level or something yeah. like that, or one stage. And it blew my mind, just the physics of it, being able to swing the sword up, hit the guy up in the air, shoot him, and basically hold him up in the air as, you know, by yeah. shooting him with bullets. I think this is a little bit extra special because we were just at his wedding today. I was literally at his wedding today, yeah. Yeah. So, probably pop this game back into my memory bank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's your honorable mention. All right, the next game. It's a, it's a, it's a bunch of sports games yeah. because I'm a dude and I like my sports games. We have SmackDown 2, Know Your Role. I have played all the SmackDown games up to a certain point there. I haven't played any of the newest ones. Mm -hmm. But this one here I remember a lot because there was a season mode that was actually two player. Yeah. And me and Pat played it together. Another one, another one I mentioned with Pat. But you would go into a season mode, you pick your guy and you you play and it would do random matches and you never knew if you're going to be facing the guy, you know, player one or if we were fighting other characters in the game. It just it was a different dynamic. Yeah. Cuz the first the first Smackdown wasn't like that. Didn't have like a season mode like that. So this was the first time they actually did a season mode and yes. made it a little bit special. Oh, that's cool. I better put that back in. <gasps> I was wondering where that was. <laughs> You'll never guess what was in there. Evil Zone. I was like, where in the hell is that game? I knew it. This is a game I picked up when I picked up Parasite Eve. And you didn't this know? Is a, I, and I was like, I don't know where that game was. Apparently, I had stacked this on top of Are you sure point. you don't have other games over there? I like don't know. Head? I might have Maybe to check. Maybe Parasite Eve's in another one. I might have to check. That's crazy. If you never would have opened that up, you never would have known. <laughs> When's the last time I played that game? Right? Now, I got two sports. Like I don't know if you think SmackDown is a sports game, but these are definitely sports yes. games. Yes. Base is loaded too. I still can hear the sounds of everything. of The music, and the, the bats, and all that stuff. Played this game with my uncles. We always you could play against. It was only like a, it was two player, but you had to play against each other. Yeah. And then watching my two uncles, like brothers, basically like they would have been late thirties, I would assume at that point. I can't. Yeah. Like, oh. yeah. They're in their thirties playing a sports game there against each other, and it's getting a little little heated. And then like and it was awesome. This is the thing. <laughs> Your family so PC very, and very, very politely polite. heated. <laughs> yeah. So, I oh, I wish to... you didn't pick that sidearm picture. <laughs> and then this, this was my, well, not my first hockey game, because I did play the ones on the NES, the Blades of Steel and ice hockey and yeah. stuff like that. But this one here, this one really was like game changing, I guess, for the yeah. hockey game series. Like, 
I know it's not 94. And I know everybody, like, 94 is the best hockey game, but this is the one I had. But if I, you didn't have 94, exactly, you're going to yeah, go to the one This is the one liked. I had. This one came out, I think, in 91 or 2. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I loved it. Well, I, I think it was just called hockey because they couldn't... It was a hers one, probably. They didn't have NHL teams on yeah. that one, did they? Or yes, they did. Yeah, there was but NHL there was, teams. There was a hockey game. Was it on the Nintendo? That couldn't, they couldn't brand or license things, so it was just kind of generic. Includes all 22, 22. NHL teams. Now and two all teams. No, it's not that many. It's 32. Anyway, <laughs> same thing. I can hear this game in my mm -hmm. head. I, I, I'll put it in once in a while just to play it. Just but to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Have it's, the it's feels. A lot of fond right memories. Here. Makes me uh, love couch co-op and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into actual some game game. Game game. Game and gaming. Golden Axe 2. Golden Axe 2 on the Sega Genesis. This was the second Genesis game I got. Now, I didn't want to sound redundant and keep repeating myself. That's why I'm kind of picking a little bit different games yeah. there. I don't want to mention the same games all the time. Golden Double Axe 2, 2. <laughs> is... Double Dragon 2, but Streets of Rage 2 yeah. was my first Genesis yeah. game. Love beat-em-ups. But this was my second one, Golden Axe 2. Yeah. And this was... Not quite as good, but this is a great game. And you and I got to play this as well. We played through yeah, this. Yeah, we played through this. It's not a long game. It's not a long it's game. It's a pretty cool game. It, it still I holds really up. I really enjoyed it. Like, I, like, we didn't have a lot of money when I was growing up. No. So when I got a game, I played this every which way, every difficulty, and every character. And then you could just go through the game a bunch of mm -hmm. times. Like, I remember on Sunday morning or Sunday after dinner, because we always went to church in the morning. We'd yeah. have Sunday dinner, and then I would go down to the basement. Not nice as this one, but I would go down to the basement, and I would literally just play for whatever, like two or three hours, and then either this or Streets of Rage. I was super impressed, your recall on this, when you're like, nope, stand right here, because if you stand right here, oh, yeah, and you hit them, it's, it's the tricks. perfect, perfect yeah. trick, perfect tricks, place. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Still love that cover art. That is so cool. He's going to make me make a painting. You, I don't know. Can you do that? Is that... He literally says stuff like that, so he's like, maybe I can talk you into doing it by saying, I don't think you can. Uh, okay. Well, I gave it away. But not all the way. All right. Instead of picking Double Dragon 2, because that is my favorite NES game. Yeah. I remember playing Double Dragon 1 a lot. And when I hear the music now... It's like PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's not saying that I don't enjoy the game. I, I enjoyed it back then. But it just kicked my butt constantly. I can't remember what stage it was, but it's the stage where you come up to like a big rock wall and a bobo comes blasting out. And I think you end up fighting two bobos at the same time. And that, if I got past them, I didn't get far into the cave. <laughs> and it was just... It was always like that. And then when Double Dragon 2 came out, I was, oh my gosh. Do you know what? I, I don't know that I've ever played the first Double Dragon. Well, we should play it. We definitely uh, should. Is it two-player? I don't think it is two-player. Oh. I don't think it is. But, I like, to this day, I've never beaten that. I don't think I've ever even gotten past that cave part. <laughs> Maybe it's something I need to do in the future. But, like I said, I still have PTSD. <laughs> But the music and everything, I can hear it in my head and it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next game on the 360. Now this one here. Rainbow Vegas, Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Rainbow. Do you want to try again? <laughs> Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Good I for you. You it. got it on the third or fourth try. The reason why this one's on the list is because this very well could be, and I do believe it is, the very first co-op game you played with Alex? Well, not played, but we've actually committed, played all the way through the campaign together two-player. Yeah. Um, so, I wasn't big into shooters back then, but this kind of got me into shooters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, you had to get into them because that's all Because that's all Alex plays. plays, right? So, but yeah, it, we, we put this in and played through it maybe a year and a half ago or two at the most. Yeah. So we played through it again for the second time and we were actually talking about this 
uh, maybe a week ago upstairs yeah. when we talked about it and I said, I bet you that game has aged pretty bad. He's like, yeah, it probably has, but you know what? It still would be fun to go through it again. I'm like, yeah, it Aww. probably would be. So I can see us the popping this in again. The fact that he still wants to play games with us. It's something yeah. we still do with Alex and he's almost 17. He still wants to play games with us. So yeah. that's pretty cool. So that's why that's on the list. All right, very last game. Nobody's going to be surprised about listen, this. listen, listen. If you could guess mine, you could guess Scott's. And this did not go in order, like in chronological order of when he played them, because no. this would come before. So, this one here, it's... I don't know if I still would say it's my favorite PS1 game, but it is the most nostalgic, and it means the most because... This game, before this game, it was all hack and slash, it was sports, Fighters. it was beat em up, yeah. it was 1v1, and yeah. then I just happened to grab, it was the greatest hits, co hits copy that I don't know where it went to. I we lost know. it in the move. <laughs> just like Evil Zone. It could be in there somewhere. <laughs> so... Grab Driver, is it in with Driver? <laughs> You've had that one forever. I've had that one for a while too. But this game here blew me away right from the start. Yeah. So much so, like when you go into that big cinematic scene and the opera and all that, it yeah. was like, and then I was like, holy smokes, you were at work. Yeah. And I remember we were renting a, an apartment over on Edgewood. Yeah. And uh, I was down in kind of like a basement. It's basement ish it was well like we a had a main level. level we had a main level and then you yeah. went down one floor and it had a room and the laundry room i do believe this was late fall when we played yeah so very close to halloween yes. on one side or the other and i was just like holy we got in a... crap i like i couldn't believe it because i never Bargain played anything at walmart because like there had been a, a probably a gap of a few years of really not gaming much yeah. other than playing a little bit of hockey here and there and then you bought me my a ps1 yep and then you bought me my ps2 yep and then the xbox <laughs> and yes, yeah i wanted to this was a him. this was a ten dollar find in the walmart bargain bin along with evil zone and uh it, like it this changed the whole game for like me. i can vividly remember this too we i remember we went to chapters yeah and bought a strategy guide. Yes, we did. And then we looked up, and when there's a, you there's a thing in here where you can get like a really powerful weapon. It's yes. not crazy overpowered, but if you, uh, there's a certain trick, if you have like, I think it's 300 pieces of junk, and yeah. you go to the guy in the, uh, the arms room or whatever, I don't know what this is called, but they where they keep all the weapons and stuff, yep. and he can upgrade your weapons or do whatever, you give him that. There's, At the precinct. In the precinct, yeah. Yep. Anyway, you do something like that, then you can get this pretty powerful weapon and you get to name it. Yeah. And remember what I named it? No, I can't remember. The boomstick. Oh, right, 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 right. Boomstick. The boomstick. And the cool thing about it, and I wish I had that memory card, but I'm going to have to go back and do that again. Do you know what? Because when you play through the game, you can carry over. It's like a new game plus. You yeah. get to carry that weapon over into your next playthrough and you just keep building that weapon up. Now, I, I gotta go back. I gotta do that again. I had the strategy guide. I know. I, I, it's, it's something cool I gotta do again. Do you know what you've never done? What? That uh, level of all the floors. Oh, there's yeah. that tower. Yeah. I, okay, I guess I've never seen the actual ending of mm -hmm. it because I think it's... Is it like 99 floors I, I or something, something like ridiculous? That. I remember talking to Phil at work yeah. about that. He said it was ridiculous to get there. And then when he got there, the the real enemy, the real boss was so powerful, it just... It was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I To this day, I haven't even seen that. I haven't gone on YouTube. I don't even know what it looks like yet. That's awesome. So you could experience it. I could and do that. It'd be I don't know. Let me experience. know in the comments if it would be worth my, my sanity to try to do something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. So that's the games, the five-ish games that made me a gamer. Yeah. That all have some kind of meaning, and I hope there was a bit of a different variety here than what you normally hear me talk about. Yeah. They all mean something to me, but they're not 
my favorite games. No, and I think, you know, this is what inspires you to find those favorite games is to just pick up a game and start playing it. And then you'll start yeah. to figure out what you really love. And yeah. that's the importance of gaming. And while we're at it, guys, please go check out the poor man's retro game room. Check out his video. We'll link yep. it in the description. And we welcome other channels yes. or in the comments. What are the five games-ish that made you a gamer? Yeah, we'd love to know. This gave me big get to know gamer vibes. It did. I, I just I'm like, oh, this is so cool. It made me almost want to do the the get to know gamer again. I know. <laughs> almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, until next time, game, game on. on.